Hi everybody! Do you have a photo shoot coming up and you want to know how to prepare? Well today's video is going to help you do that. After the bump! Hey everybody, this is Doug Fall with Augmented Actor, where we help you augment your acting career with tips, tactics, and tech. Today I'm going to a photo shoot for a very large uh, technology company that works in the medical uh, profession, and uh, I don't want to name their name for confidentiality reasons, but uh, I'm going to be doing a photo shoot. It's just simply photos, and so I'm going to tell you how I prepare for photo shoots today. I'm going to be taking my camera on the road with me and giving you some tips along the way. First thing you want to do is you want to read the breakdown very carefully. Your agent or whoever's casting the project will have sent you uh, a location and the requirements that they need from you. Sometimes they need you to bring your own wardrobe, they'll tell you how to do your hair and makeup, they'll tell you the rates and the times and the location and what to bring with you. So read this very carefully. For instance, on my particular shoot, I uh, was requested to bring three different shirt options and some different pants options and then some shoes to go along with these outfits. And they told me to bring some athletic and some dress shoes because I might be playing a couple different kinds of characters. So here I have my actor toolkit and that has all the stuff that you need for on set. If you haven't got an actor toolkit, I have a great little video. You can click the link here to see that video on uh, 15 items you should pack inside your actor toolkit. Now I'm gonna bring a larger suitcase today because they're gonna have me bring some shoes. Now they wanted dress shoes, so I have black shoes to go with my black pants, and brown shoes to go with my brown pants, and then they wanted some athletic shoes, so I'm throwing my tennis shoes in there, and I'll put my actor toolkit on top. Now I am pretty much ready to go. Now here are my only three options for a dress shirt today. They wanted me to bring three different options, and they wanted things to be a solid color, kind of neutral and kind of low key and yet I have this bright red one and I have this checkerboard. Now these both have patterns. Uh, this one has a very tight checkerboard which sucks for film and uh, video and photos. They might be able to get away with this on their high tech photos but it does it gives that moire pattern that you want to avoid and this has big check checks so it's it's not very good to do for a photo shoot either unless they particularly want you in something like that. So that leaves me with blue. Now blue is often worn by men in um, corporate shoots and whatnot, and so it's it's kind of the most popular color that people wear. Plus my collar is a little gross, and I got pit stains down here. This is just really a trashy shirt. I bought it at the Goodwill. So basically, I don't have any options for shirts. So what do I do? I gotta go dig into my own pocket and uh, go to the mall and get some, some new clothes. Now I know that most actors are on a budget. They don't, we don't make a lot of money here. So I know that you can't always rush out and buy some clothes, but when you can afford to buy some new clothes, uh, particularly plain shirts and pants that fit and have them altered, it's a good investment in your acting career because then you will have those items ready uh, for the next time that you have a shoot. You also wanna make sure you bring some socks that match your dress shoes and belts as well. These tips are mostly for the gentlemen out there. Uh, ladies, you wanna bring uh, a top and a bottom or a dress that is sort of a plain color and that looks good on you, fits well, and bring three options of each of those items. Okay, if you're a guy too, you need to look in the breakdown and see if you need to shave or uh, have certain kinds of facial hair. That sometimes they will make a request and if you look different than you do in your headshot or when you went to your audition, then you wanna to try to match what they know you look like. So you wanna make sure that you give yourself several hours after you shave. And the reason this is important is because you might get razor burn or a little cut on your neck and that can take a couple hours to heal properly and makeup does a terrible job of covering razor burn up. So always leave yourself enough time to shave a few hours before your shoot. Don't do it right beforehand and always use shaving cream or, and water when you shave. I often shave the night before if I can do it and then just do a little quick once over in the morning. That helps eliminate cuts and razor burn. Next, you wanna check the breakdown and see whether or not you need to be camera ready. Now, what does camera ready mean? Well, basically it means you have your hair and your makeup done and you are ready to just walk on set as soon as you get there. 
If they don't ask you to be camera ready, that usually means that they have a wardrobe person and a hair person and a makeup person. So then you wanna do the opposite. You don't wanna wear any makeup. You don't wanna do anything with your hair. You just wanna make sure that it's trimmed up and you're shaved and ready to go. And then somebody there will put the makeup on you and put the hair gel in and all that stuff and make sure you look good. That's to give them options. And that's usually on more professional end shoots or shoots that pay you a little bit more. That's usually when they can afford a makeup and hair person. Otherwise, they'll say camera ready and you should be there camera ready. If you're asked to wear makeup to a shoot or do your hair, you wanna make sure you do it in a way that is appropriate for the kind of shoot you're shooting. So if you're shooting a wild, crazy character, then you can spruce up your makeup and do something wild with your hair. But otherwise, you wanna stick with something a little bit conservative, just your normal day-to-day -day office makeup or hair would be good, or what you imagine that to be if you don't work in an office. Driving to the mall, driving to the mall. Luckily, I left myself enough time today to get to the mall and buy these shirts. You always wanna give yourself hours of extra time before your shoot. Now, sometimes that's unavoidable. You're, you gotta be there at 7 a.m. So you wanna make, take care of these kind of things the day before. Plan ahead, it's always helpful. Now, my shoot today isn't until about three o'clock and it's just across town, so it's not too far, but I'm gonna leave at least an hour early because traffic could be bad and you don't wanna be late. Like today, for instance, I don't have shirts and if I had just pulled those shirts out last night or yesterday, I would have said, oh, okay, I need to go get some more clothes. Well, uh, I didn't do it, but at least I left myself six hours today. That way I could get up and shave, shower, get my day on, exercise, do the things that I need to do to take care of myself so that I can show up and be ready to work. Whenever you're on any kind of shoot that is a day shoot or a film or something like that where you're just on set for one day, if it's a paid gig, they're going to usually require you to fill out either a W-4 or is it a W-2? I don't know, one of those worker forms where you are an actual employee of the company for that one day, or they're gonna have you fill out an I-9, which is an independent contractor sort of form. So if you're gonna be filling out any kind of paperwork like that, you always wanna make sure that you have a copy of your ID and a social security card or your passport. They will usually remind you to bring those items with you, but they're very important so that you can get paid. Otherwise, you gotta arrange a time to come back and, and have them see it. They have to actually see these documents. Them's the tax laws, them's the rules. You have to do it, at least in the US. If you can't afford to buy clothes at the mall, uh, who can afford to buy clothes anywhere? But if you can't afford to buy clothes at the mall, you gotta go to your thrift store, look for sales, do this stuff ahead of time because sizes and stuff might not always be a match. So go to the thrift stores often. It's a great place to get shoes and shirts and things like that. And for your acting stuff, usually you don't need something that's perfect fit or whatever like that. You can just get the best thing that they have and you have options at least to throw into your closet. God damn it, I just missed my turn off. Now I gotta go the long way. Dang it. Oh, see this is why you shouldn't videotape and drive at the same time. You forget where you're supposed to turn. I, I'm totally going to the bank, not the mall. Okay, some more things you can do to be prepared for a photo or video shoot. You can get a manicure. I just got one yesterday and the company that hired me is actually going to reimburse me for the manicure. And the reason for that is, especially in photography, these cameras get very, very close up. Uh, you might have to do a little bit of hand modeling, you know, holding a product or something like that. And photographers, the editors of, of photography, really hate cleaning up chipped cuticles and bitten nails, which I tend to bite my nails. Uh, I, I worked as a I worked for a photographer once and these things are super important to, to pay attention to. You wanna trim your nose hairs if you're a guy and the ear hair. You wanna make sure that your sideburns are cleaned up, that you don't have stray hair sticking out all over the place. Those things are really difficult to clean up in post, so to speak. And they take a Photoshop person hours to work around. Always think of your presentation through the eyes of somebody who's going to be editing it later. So have your nails done, have your hair done, get a haircut if you need it, and give yourself time for those. Also, 
ask if you can be reimbursed for those things because sometimes they will want to pay you uh, to have those things done so that you save them hours of work later on. Again, I missed my turn off, damn it. Uh, okay, you are distracting me. No worries, no worries, it's only 10.30. I have until 2.30, no, I have until 1.30, so I got three hours. 11, 12, 1, 30. Three hours or so to get all this stuff done. So, we're good. This is why you leave time before you shoot. This is why you prepare it's for stuff like this. Okay, I'm at the mall. I just got three brand new shirts and I am set. Now I just gotta go home and make sure that the shirts look like they're not new. Okay, it's only 10.54 and I got plenty of time to get home and iron these clothes. <laughs> I just bought three shirts for a shoot. And these shirts will be primarily used for my acting uh, career. And they will go in my acting wardrobe. And so I can keep that receipt and write these items off on my taxes, most likely. I'm not a tax expert, so you wanna ask your tax advisor, but keep your receipts when you buy things for shoots like this because you know it can help you uh, at year end when you're doing your taxes. Uh, you wanna make sure that you iron all your clothes, your shirts, your pants, blouses. Well, I don't know if you can iron a blouse. But uh, just make sure everything is clean and pressed. Now usually I would take these things to the dry cleaners in advance, but today I don't have time for that crap, so I'm doing it myself. So it's good to have an iron and an ironing board, even a little mini ironing board is good to have on hand. Now often on sets, especially the bigger professional sets, they will have a steamer or an iron there and somebody, the costume designer or assistant, will usually take your items choose what you're gonna wear, and then go and have it prepped just like the makeup artist is going to prep your pretty face. Maybe you don't have to have things pressed, but you don't wanna count on that being the case because if they don't have one and you come up with wrinkly clothes, it's really gonna reflect poorly on you as an actor. This is your job to be prepared. One of those things you gotta do as an actor. Okay, one shirt down, two to go. It's 11.45 now. So we're still doing good on time. Her, don't use your teeth to bite these things off with. Man, there's a bunch of crap in this thing. One of the uh, important things to do when you have a photo shoot or a film shoot in particular, is to get plenty of rest the night before. You don't wanna have bags under your eyes and dark circles. You don't wanna be hungover. You wanna look fresh and you wanna have lots of water during the day. You know, especially if you have a morning shoot, I recommend maybe one cup of coffee, but stop it at one cup of coffee because if you have two cups of coffee, you're gonna be using the bathroom all day long and sometimes you might not be able to do that. Okay, so let's get rid of this shit. Here are our three pressed shirts that we're gonna take to the shoot today, voila. Here are our three pressed pairs of pants. Three different options. I've also got some ties to go along with the shirt. Plain ties are best because again, you don't wanna worry about patterns. Okay, it's just before noon. I got all my shopping done. I got all my ironing done. I'm shaved, my hair is washed, and I'm pretty much ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go have some lunch. I wanna have some food in my belly and I wanna have a little time to digest it so that I'm not bloated or anything like that when I'm at the shoot. So here's a little trick I've learned about how to carry clothes that are on hangers. If you don't have a bag, you can just get a sturdy wooden hanger like this, hang the clothes on it. They'll shift from side to side like that, but they will stay on there and you can scoop them up or hang them up and then you just have to hang one item up like that and you have your wardrobe with you. Uh, I just broke my hanger, my clothes fell on the floor, so maybe that's not such a good idea after all. Get a stronger hanger. Okay, I got my actor toolkit, I got my clothes not on the broken hanger, and I am ready to go. It's about 1.50 now, so I have a good hour to get there. I've mapped out my route on Waze, and I know that I'm gonna be there on time. It's 2.12 now, and I've got about half an hour before I gotta be there, actually about 15 minutes, and that's about what my map app is telling me I have time for. 
I hit a bit of traffic. So as always in Seattle, it's raining and I'm in traffic. So good thing I left a little early. All right, we are parked and ready to go inside. It is 2.32, so I have 15 minutes to spare, yay! I just got back from doing the shoot. I'm sorry, I couldn't take a camera in. I, well, I had my camera, but they didn't let me take any photos or video because it was a confidential set and they had some new equipment they didn't want anybody to see. So I can't even mention who I did the shoot for. But here's the crazy thing. After all that shopping at the mall and all that ironing of shirts, turns out that they didn't need any of the shirts that I brought and instead they put me in doctor scrubs and a lab coat. And the manicure that I got, they didn't need that either because they put rubber gloves on me. So them's the breaks. That's how it happens sometimes. You bring all this crap with you and then they don't need any of it. But it's always good to be prepared as an actor and make sure you have the things you need. And so I hope you found this journey through my day preparing for a photo shoot enlightening. And if not, well, I don't blame you. It was a lot of going all over the place and doing a bunch of stuff. Oh, hey, while you're here, uh, subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of stuff. Or uh, like it and comment down below. Tell me how you get prepared for photo shoots or how you don't get prepared for photo shoots. I want to hear from you. Anyway, good to see you. Talk to you next time. Bye.